Hey there, welcome back again. So if you missed part 1, you can go back and watch it. And as promised, here is part 2. Enjoy. Install the bootstick on an used laptop and enjoy the use in it. A lot more than Windows. Oh yeah, definitely Mac. Because that's the thing that got me into the Linux work in the first place. I bought this MacBook, it's 2006 MacBook. It's really, really old and uh, you know, I made a video about it. And it's really, really slow. It has only like a core dual, right? And they had no option to get most of its power. The only option I had is Linux because if I wanted to make this laptop or this MacBook almost like 90% usable like at least 80 or 70% usable I had to install Linux I went for MX Linux and from there it just started you know getting worse and worse in a good way of course where I started installing Linux on everything else I had like three other laptops and that's where I started experimenting things or you know installing Arch here then Debian there then I didn't know some kind of silly Linux distribution like the Justin Bieber Linux and, and just get it's going and here I am now officially using this full time, you know, on all end Linux right now, just because I installed Linux for some random reasons on a MacBook one day. So yeah, definitely recommend that. One, customizability, privacy, the idea that games actually work on Linux now. Yes, gaming is definitely possible on Linux, but do yourself a favor and get an AMD card. If you're a beginner on Linux and you want to game on Linux, make sure you buy an AMD card or an Intel card. And yes, even even if it feels weird to say but an intel card both of those are really great options nvidia is still great but if you have one of those you know rtx 50 series with all these fancy graphic options uh believe me it's not gonna be a great experience because most of those fancy stuff won't work out of the box if they did work in the first place that's the thing simply because amd and intel are like so deep into the open source side of thing while nvidia is not not really, you know, they're trying, they're doing their best, but don't get upset if you have an NVIDIA card, you're still gonna be able to game. Matter of fact, some games run better on Linux on NVIDIA than AMD. Had some free time between university semesters and I needed something to fill the time. So I had to go as installing Arch without the auto installation thing and never looked back. Shit's fun as f you reminded me of uh, the first time I installed ours. Man, it was painful, but somehow at the end of the day, we're like, oh, that was fun. Oh yeah, that's was pretty much fun. You know, when somebody asked me how it went with the arch installation, I keep just saying, oh yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's amazing. I had a really good time installing arch. But the real story is that it was really, really painful. I don't know. Installing arch without the auto installation thingy, which is, uh, it's called arch install. It's a script. Pretty straightforward. It's type it's you just select a couple things like your username password the desktop environments and all kind of things and then it gets installed it's really a time saver you know most of people that uses arch install it using the arch install because what's the point of installing arch without the script if it's just gonna save you time to use the script sounds like you know how to install arch without the script you know i'm bad at explaining my points but you get it mainly because i'm a nerd but these days i also I refuse to use Windows because of privacy. Somebody explained to me why there is still people out there that just doesn't care about their privacy or their data in general or whatever they do on the web. Like you should know that privacy should be your number one concern before everything because if your data get, get sold and all kind of shady things gonna be happening in the background what you be like no I don't care and you know what I have nothing to hide no I don't no it's fine it's fun it's not fun man like you gotta give some value to yourself and be like, you know what? My data should be my data and not some other shady companies they say, no? I don't want to get sold like a products okay i'm a human being and my privacy should be a thing it's your option at the end of the day but please you know make a decision one day to be like you know what i'm done with those shade fucking companies i gotta make a move and get my privacy back talking about privacy there's somebody that comes at freedom thank you so much we know that you love freedom for sure because of how microsoft's mentality shifted from being a simple operating system to a corporate gaslights and says bench even if you pay a full license they 
explanation behind that is really simple, you know? When you source something, in that case a company which we're gonna call Microsoft, it all starts with this feeling of, damn, I love what I'm doing. You know, I wanna make something. I wanna like create something that will change the world. And that's how it started with Microsoft. They wanted to create something that will actually change the world and that will be profitable in the same time. Plus, the thing is, by the time they got greedy and greedy and greedy to the points where the sales are caring about only money and nothing else. You as a customer or you as a Windows user, they don't care about you. And to prove that right, we can take Windows 11 as an example. If Microsoft really cared about us, we'll see a really, really amazing operating system out of Windows 11 and not that shit box that Microsoft created for us. No sense of existing, way worse than Windows 10 and it's just horrible. Fast freedom, Bill Gates named his company after his dongle, super lightweight and stable. See, so tell me you use Gen 2. Gen 2, man. Like, Gen 2 is not that bad, you know? I definitely failed to install Gen 2, you know, right? Then I needed the help of another person to install Gen 2, then I used Gen 2, then I realized it wasn't that bad. Then I switched back to the thing I was using, which is in before. I just, you know, like, yeah, come on. I'm not, I'm not that person that will be using Gen 2. But that doesn't mean Gen 2 is bad. I personally think it's a really great Linux distribution for a specific type of people. Not for everyone, but it's a thing that deserves some attention as well. I have been tired of Windows for a long time and didn't really research the options. After watching a video from, from someone ordinary games about Linux, I decided to try it. 12 hours after installing Mints, I erased Windows completely two days after that. I installed Arch, haven't looked back since. Damn, things going so fast over here. 12 hours and then just removed windows and twins all in in arch man how did you do it give us like the recipe man how magic that's that's like magic you know within a day like confusing confusing man Conf this is the fastest transition i ever uh seen in my life like 12 hours you installed the mix you erased this completely like you removed windows completely then two days later you installed arch i don't know how to feel about this but you definitely have a big brain over there to be able to make such a move good luck with your linux journey because rmps came to me and told me about FOSS. well we all love open source projects not gonna lie like who doesn't come on in 2018 i was in the middle of college course about repairing computers with somewhat old toshiba laptop everything played just fine until one day out of the blue windows slowed down to a crawl to the point where it took an actual day to transfer a less than one megabyte text file daniel Oh, that's a lot of freedom over here. As first I thought I accidentally installed some malware, so I backed up everything and did a fresh install with only the school essentials. Installed about a week later, it started doing the same thing again. I asked the teachers about this and they had no idea what the hell was going on. Virus scans came up clean and nothing we did on Windows would fix the problem. After a while, I bought an SSD to replace what I thought was a dying hard drive and Windows finally worked properly. So it was only like hard disk problem. Even if the problem was solved, I was still pissed about it. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I got virus from installing IMG burn from the official website. How? A virus from an official website? That seems a bit confusing. And then then finding out uh, both Linux and macOS have better disk earning tools that would even be pre-installed. Yeah, that's actually true. I installed Linux and pretty much quit Windows cold turkey in the middle of college. What a crazy decision. I still graduated using almost nothing but time. Great job. Later on, I found out that my old hard drive from my Toshiba laptop was perfectly fine and still works to this day with no issues. Wow. The only reason why it was slow because Windows limited gets hot oh make a lot of sense i talked about that in the past yeah it's just horrible it's people think windows telemetry is okay well it's not okay that drive to the points where it's cold and multitask anymore makes you wonder what windows is doing to your hard drive in the background to make an old hdd squeal like that man this is horrible and that's the thing you know back in the days before i even know about planks i used to do dell one technique which is basically installing 
uh, you know, the Tiny 10, right? Like, there's little versions of Windows that are really optimized, and they could see the difference. And yes, I was using a hard drive. And for some reasons, which is already not the reason, when you use Tiny 10, it's super optimized. When you use Windows 10, it's not. And the explanation is that, you know, Microsoft thought that everyone uses SSDs and NVMEs, so they would notice if they put a bit more pressure of the hard drive using the Windows telemetry thing. But no people this actually notice it and here is a great example where your hard disk or what i call the stupid spinning drive will become really slow just because windows telemetry is doing things in the background without you knowing i had an old windows 7 laptop this was 90 percent dead with nothing to lose i installed ubuntu on it it's run it like it was new and the over amplification option even made the speakers did they um amplification right okay option even made the speakers start working again oh damn okay that was when i realized linux is better for pretty much everything no matter what you do in life linux can have a place and it's you know it just can do stuff and when you see that you can turn a basically an old windows 7 laptop into a fully functional piece of hardware believe me it's worth it give linux a try microsoft's windows 10 end of life announcements in 2025 gave me a deadline for switch and sons that have unsupported hardware windows 11 recall announcements pushed me to switch as a last trial. I still use Windows only for university work as I need to use Windows only software for my job. But all my personal activities is under Linux. Linux is my main OS. You know, it makes more sense. Keeping Windows is not always an option. But in the same time, leaving Windows isn't an option at all. So if you use uh, Windows for work or university, you gotta keep it. So here we are. We reached the 10 minutes limits for today's video. And just to not make this video longer, we're gonna stop here. But if you want more of these videos where you comment, give your opinion about something, and they just record a video about it and read that thing, I'm interested in making more. Just if you show interest in the comment. So this was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.